Hello and welcome to another Yukon Q Center video. This video is all about the comparison test for proving convergence or divergence of infinite series. In this video, I have three objectives. I'm going to show you what the comparison test is, I'm going to explain why it works, and I'm going to share some strategies as to how you could effectively use the test. Since this is a very comprehensive and in-depth video, I recommend you get out some notes to help you follow along with me. What the comparison test basically says is if you have two infinite series where all of the terms in both of the series are positive, and you're able to compare the two series one of these two ways, then you're able to use the comparison test to conclude that one of them converges or diverges. Let's look at the two possible comparisons one at a time. The first one says if the terms in AN are always less than or equal to the terms in BN, and we know that the series BN converges, then the series AN also has to converge. And let's reason out why this has to be true. If we know that AN is always less than or equal to BN, it also has to be true that the series of AN has to be less than or equal to the series of BN. And that makes sense intuitively because for the series AN, what you're basically doing is you're adding a whole bunch of smaller or equal numbers and comparing that to the sum of a whole bunch of bigger or equal numbers. Since we know that the series BN converges, we could say that the sum is equal to some real number N. And we could change this inequality to being this, essentially saying the series AN is going to be less than or equal to some real number N. And since the sum of the series can't go beyond N, it has to converge to some real number. As for the other comparison, if we know that BN is always less than or equal to AN, and we know that the series of BN diverges, then the series of AN also has to diverge. Let's reason out why this has to be true. If we know that BN is always less than or equal to AN, and we know from that that the series of BN has to be less than or equal to the series of AN, what we could say is, since the series of BN diverges, that's like saying the series goes to infinity. But if the series goes to infinity, then this inequality essentially becomes this informal inequality. But if we're saying that infinity is less than or equal to the sum of an, that's like saying an can't possibly converge to a real number. Rather, it also has to go to infinity. And that, by definition, means the series an diverges. Now that we've looked at the definition of comparison test thoroughly, what we're going to do is work through some examples. I'm trying to figure out if this series here converges or diverges. The first thing that you should do if you're trying to use the comparison test is take the sequence that you're given and set it equal to an. Your second step is to find what I like to call a simplified version of the sequence. Set that as your bn. And with that, you want to simplify the sequence in such a way you could easily tell that it converges or diverges. In this example here, I'm thinking to myself, what if I was to get rid of this plus n? Then as my bn, what I get is 1 divided by 2 raised to n, which I could further rewrite as 1 half raised to n. And you might notice that this is the geometric series where we have a is equal to 1 and we have r is equal to 1 half. What I need to do is I need to prove that a of n is less than or equal to b of n. Using this table of values, let's see what happens. If I substitute in 0, I get 1 for both of them. If I substitute in 1, I get 1 third compared to a half. Here I'm going to get 1 sixth compared to 1 fourth. And finally, I get 1 divided by 11 compared to 1 divided by 8. So notice, because of the fact that an has this additional plus n in the denominator, its denominator is always going to be larger, but that causes the fraction as a whole to always be either equal to or less than all of the terms in Bn. So I could conclude, using the comparison test, that A of n has to converge. Let's take a look at another example. Notice before I did anything else, I set my given sequence equal to an. As I'm thinking about how I'm going to construct my Bn, what I notice is I have this n squared in my numerator. No matter what number n is, n squared is going to be positive, meaning n squared is only going to increase the numerator. 
And if the numerator of a fraction increases, the fraction as a whole also increases. So what I'm thinking is, let me get rid of this n squared so that my bn is 1 divided by the square root of n. The square root of anything is just raising that something to the 1 half power. And what's really nice about writing the sequence in this form is, I could clearly tell that this is a p series, where p is equal to 1 half, which is of course less than or equal to 1. So I know that this series associated with bn is going to diverge. So, if I could show that the series bn is always going to be less than the series an, then I could prove that an is going to diverge. The reason being, if the smaller of two series diverges, then the greater of the two series also has to diverge. In order to show you that bn is always going to be less than or equal to an, let's construct a new table of values. When n is equal to 1, bn equals 1, whereas an is equal to 2. When n is equal to 2, bn is 1 divided by the square root of 2, whereas an is 5 divided by the square root of 2. When n is equal to 3, bn is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 3, whereas an is equal to 10 divided by the square root of 3. And I think this is going to convince you that bn is always less than or equal to an. And this is really nice, because now that we've shown this, and considering the fact that we know that the series 1 divided by the square root of n diverges by the p-series test, then the greater of the two series also has to diverge according to the comparison test. Summarize the strategies I talked about in this video. The basic gist of the comparison test is you want to take the series that you're given and compare it to a simplified version of the series. And the simplified version should be something that you could easily tell is convergent or divergent, such as a geometric series or a p-series. And what's very important to remember is, numerically, if you simplify the denominator in your simplified series, that's going to cause your new series to be greater than your original series. Whereas, in this example here, if you were to reduce the numerator, then the simplified series is going to be less than your original series.